You guys heard of these cat suppressors? I think they may be on to something. All kidding aside, these cat suppressors aren't quite like anything else I've ever shot. This video is specifically on the WB or white bread cat's dedicated 5.56 can, and this thing is small. Yet, because of the tech inside, the can delivers really astonishing suppression levels. Levels that typically can only be achieved with a much larger can. It does all this while also delivering extremely low back pressure. So is this the best 5.56 silencer currently available? Well, that's a complicated question with many aspects to consider. I will say it's easily one of the best. Let's dive into what all cat can deliver in this very small package. We're gonna take a look at all the features and what the design can deliver. Then we're going to take it a step further and look at the durability of the titanium version, flash suppression and erosion. So sit back, grab some popcorn and enjoy the ride. And if you're interested in getting a Cat WB or any other awesome silencers, check out Silencer Shop. If you're not using Silencer Shop, you are working too hard. They make getting suppressors easier than anyone else in the industry. They make fingerprinting simple with their kiosk. You probably have a dealer with a Silencer Shop kiosk in your area. Silencer Shop is the one and done silencer buying solution. It's headache free and the best way to get your silencer. And they are the exclusive distributor for Cat silencers. So be sure to check out Silencer Shop for your next addition to your suppressor collection. The white bread is a complex piece of engineering. That just sounds funny to say. And while I don't fully understand all the details as I'm not a silencer engineer, I can explain some aspects. Both CAT and Huxworks have small elongated gas paths, but CAT utilizes them in a unique way to cool the core. The core itself incorporates technology from another industry and employs a specific series of pressure chambers and a distinct end cap to effectively reduce output pressure in what CAT calls surge bypass. Ultimately, the intricacies of how and why the WB and surge bypass work may not be essential to grasp. What truly matters is that it works exceptionally well. One standout feature of the WB is its ability to reach very impressive levels of suppression in such a small compact package. I dug through the numbers on Pew Science, and unless I'm missing something, there isn't a can with better suppression numbers on 556 that is shorter than the WB. There are some that do outperform it, but they are longer and sometimes much longer than the WB. This means you're getting the most suppression possible inch for inch in the smallest package out of the WB and I think that's what most of us are after. The WB also delivers extremely solid sound performance while delivering very low back pressure. A lot of people wanted to know what the back pressure was compared to this can or that can, and here's what I'll say. If the Huxworks flow is a 10, and what I would say the king of low back pressure, the Cat WB is an 8.5 or 9 on that scale, but delivers significantly better sound performance. You would still be running most of your piston guns in the unsuppressed setting with the WB. The Cat WB offers four versions to choose from with two material options. 3D printed DMLS or direct metal laser sintering, and two mounting choices. Titanium provides an ultra lightweight option while Inconel adds durability while delivering good weight when compared to other Inconel silencers. For mounting, the hub rear allows compatibility with various solutions while the QD version is designed to attach to the CAT Spooky muzzle device. The muzzle device features reverse threads and a taper lock, ensuring a secure fit preventing the silencer from loosening during use. The white bread dimensions vary depending on the version. The hub option measures in at 5.45 inches long and weighs 6.9 ounces for titanium or 12.8 ounces for Inconel. The QD option is 5.8 inches long with weights of 7.8 ounces for titanium or 14.4 ounces for Inconel. Please note that weights may vary slightly due to DMLS manufacturing processes. As observed in the samples that I received, my Inconel can was a bit heavier, and believe it or not, my titanium can was actually a bit lighter. To demonstrate how insanely lightweight the titanium WB is, odds are pretty good that it's lighter than the phone you're using to watch this video. All right, let's give it a listen.
hope it came across in the test. The suppression capabilities of the WB are outstanding, especially given its size. A big part of this video will not just be, is the WB any good, because it is a phenomenal silencer. It will be which build material suits your shooting style best. And if you're like me, you want to know, can I take advantage of the massive weight savings of the titanium version without worrying about wear and tear on that unit? There's a tool for every job and different jobs require different tools. CAT currently offers the WB in two build materials that have two very different use cases. There's the Inconel 718, which is an extremely hard use can that can take extreme firing schedules, extreme temps, and basically anything you can throw at it, but it is heavier, actually about twice as heavy as the titanium. Then there's the titanium can. This can is so lightweight at between seven and eight ounces, depending on the model, it barely weighs more than some muzzle brakes. I know I've said in the past that you won't even notice this can or that can on the end of your rifle, but that has never been more true than with the titanium white bread. Now that very impressive weight does come with a few restrictions. If you go to Kat's website, at the bottom click on manuals, then click on WB and you can see the restrictions and as far as the titanium goes there are quite a few. First off, barrel length is restricted to nothing less than 10 inches which is pretty doable and then there's the temperature restrictions. According to Kat, the can shouldn't exceed 650 degrees and they recommend knowing how many consecutive shots in five round groupings it takes to get to 550 degrees and then let the can cool back down. Now that is a serious simplification of what is written there and if you plan on getting the silencer, I highly recommend you go to the page and read and understand it for yourself. I wanted to see how many rounds it took to get to about 550 degrees so you would have some idea. Now there are so many variables in this test from barrel length to ammo to ambient temperature and all these will change your results. We used a 16 inch rifle, Callaway 55 grain 556 and the temperature that day was in the low 60s. We ended up doing the test three times to get good results because it was surprising how fast the can heated up, but almost more surprising to me was how fast the can cooled down from extreme temperatures. Now I want to say that the way we did this test isn't quite the way Cat recommends and here's why. Cat recommends you do a five shot string and then take a minute to test the temperature. Well, we had the slightest headwind and basically the silencer would cool down so fast that we were having a hard time reaching any significant temperatures, just giving it say 20 or 30 seconds to cool. So what I decided to do was take a series of shots at one second intervals and see how many shots it would take to get to about 550 degrees. And I'm gonna put these in the exact order we did them in. So if 10 rounds didn't get it hot enough and 20 rounds got it too hot, let's see what 15 rounds will do. I'm going to speed up the shooting to save you guys some time, but hopefully given you're running a somewhat similar setup, this will give you a rough idea of how hard you can push the titanium white bread. Five thirty. I saw a 530 in there. Yep. About 10. So about about 15 rounds with 16 inch shooting 55 grain. Not the hottest ammo in the world. Look how quick it cools. Wow. 450. 474 max. Like I said, there's a lot of variables that can change your results. I knew that Mr. Recky on Instagram did the same test with a slightly different configuration. He used a 14.5 inch barrel Winchester M193 ammo and actually had a very similar ambient temperature of 63 degrees. His findings basically said in his configuration he could get 10 rounds in before reaching that 550 degree marker. He did a much more thorough test with timestamps and charted the cooling cycles as well. Huge thanks to Mr. Recky for letting me use his data in this video. Go give him a follow on Instagram. He's got some great information on silencers, rifle builds, six arc, and just basically anything else firearm related. I've been following him for a long time. Now, just so you know, there are limitations to the Inconel version two, but they are at levels I don't think the average civilian shooter with semi-automatic weapons will ever be able to achieve. But again, you should go to the site and understand the limitations. Time for the flash test. And I know it doesn't look that dark, but the cameras I use do a very good job of gathering light so it looks brighter than it really is. These shots were taken right at sundown and as you can see, 
Even a titanium can with a good amount of rounds through it will still have just a little spark. That's why titanium dust is sometimes used in sparklers and other fireworks. I will say after some rounds, the flash from the titanium can was very minimal. However, if flash signature is a major factor in determining which can you should go with, the Inconel version is probably the way you should go. A good portion of this video has been determining not whether or not the cat white bread is a good silencer or not, it definitely is. It has been trying to determine which one is right for your use case scenario and I think a lot of that is just how tough the titanium version really is. Well, like I said, we exceeded the recommended temperature several times. While I didn't necessarily keep track of rounds, I would say the titanium is probably approaching the thousand round mark. I would guess north of 800 somewhere. When we look at the rear of the can, the erosion is either non-existent or at least very minimal. Cat does refer to this as a dedicated waffle erosion interface at the rear of the blast chamber, and there should be no concern if you do see wear. Now, like I said earlier, I didn't read the recommended guidelines till the review is about half over. While I will say in that time, I probably overheated it a little, this isn't my first titanium can, so I did keep it off SBRs and away from any real hard use because I know it's titanium. But this is what the level of erosion looks like and I think that's pretty good. I think as long as you're not mag dumping, using it on really short SBRs, and just being slightly conscious about the use, you can take advantage of the weight savings of the titanium can. On the other hand, if you do mag dumps regularly, shoot really short SBRs, or just don't want to worry about how hard you're using your silencers, then the Inconel is probably the way to go. I apologize when some videos like this one take longer than expected. I aim to provide an accurate representation of what product ownership looks like. I dislike videos where viewers have very limited experience with a product and try to represent that as a full understanding of the product. When I learned about the warnings associated with the titanium version of the white bread, I wanted to test it more extensively to offer a more accurate portrayal. Although it's still not sufficient, putting more rounds for it hopefully provided a better understanding of its capabilities. If you're considering a 5.56 can, the Cat WB needs to be on your list. This can delivers massive performance in a very small package. I think for me, I will benefit more from the weight savings of the titanium version than I would from the durability of the Inconel. That's a decision you will have to make based on what type of shooting you do. I went in this review thinking titanium was going to be my go-to, and then when I became aware of the recommended firing schedule, I figured I'd have to go Inconel, and then after some more use and more testing, I think I'm back on the titanium bandwagon. Whichever way you go, it's amazing the performance this small can delivers in sound performance and low back pressure. Just a few short years ago, I would have said that's completely impossible to achieve out of a package this size. Guys, thank you so much for watching and another huge thank you goes out to Silencer Shop. They can easily guide you through the NFA process and they are the exclusive distributor for cat suppressors. Also got to give a huge thank you to Callaway Ballistics for providing all the 556 that we shot in this video and it was a lot. So go by and give them some love. We always appreciate them helping out the channel. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because as always, we have some really big reviews in the works that you won't want to miss. If you want to know what those reviews are way before they hit the YouTube channel, check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter where you can see what's being reviewed in real time. And by the way, check the links in the description there. You can find some cool stuff that I've found and the best deals on it. If you want to help support Alabama Arsenal, the absolute best way to do that is through Patreon. These videos can be surprisingly expensive to make and every little bit helps and is greatly appreciated. There's also Alabama Arsenal gear available right below the video if you want to go out and represent. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching.